Hey, and welcome back to Blindy Rufflip. This is episode 30 and my name is Ion. Unfortunately, this project has been progressing a lot slower than anticipated, but we are back in the electronic workshop to do some more wiring, actually the last bits, and I have no clue how often I've said that in the past, but this is really the last bit. Um, at least I hope so. Um, yeah, the project is uh, progressing nicely and today we'll install some more software and uh, check some more features. And let's see where we get. Okay, so um, this is the programming uh, team doing the software and firmware. Please say hi, team. Hello. Hello. They've, they've been busy the last weeks and months, and today we want to deploy some of the software that they made. That's pretty awesome. Thanks for helping with this open source project. You're welcome. Yay. Segfault has been hooking up the air pressure sensor. So can you explain what's what here? Okay, so the air pressure sensor uses a digital communication protocol. Um, so to turn it, uh, to make it work, all we need to do is provide power, ground, um, and a serial communication. That has a clock and a data line. Um, the clock and data line uh, talk a protocol called I2C. Um, the Arduino natively supports this with a library, so we can just um, we can just talk to it and ask it what values we need in software quite easily. Um, so we have a clock and data hooked up to A4 and A5. Yep. And then we have a 3.3 volt pin output on the ground pin of the Arduino used. Okay. In the last episode, episode 29, I mainly fixed bugs and uh, closed the suction box by mounting and making these two parts. And now we are back at that stage to test software and firmware, because right now I have no clue whether the new counterweight that I installed actually works, or I have no clue whether the light is sufficient, because right now we can't, can't initialize the cameras. Um, but the Arduino is now installed and wired up, and all the Issues and uh, bugs have been chased, at least those that I know of. And we are back on the stage to test software. Um, what are we about to do, Segfault? Hopefully we're about to move the box up. But okay, maybe we're going to move no. the box up now. Okay, here's nothing. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, so maybe we should just... Uh, change the polarity of the motor so it doesn't go down anymore. So the crash you just observed that the suction box made most likely happened because either the motor was fighting itself or because it was um, going down instead of up and it already wasn't the lowest position. So um, we just uh, had this error. We'll change now the polarity of the motor and uh, try again, not from the bottom, but rather from the center. Okay, go. Okay. So end switch works, stops the operation, good. Suction box moves nicely. That's lovely. Uh, right, so what I need to do to fix that, instead of fussing around with space cookie software, is just invert the coils. Okay. Apparently it doesn't matter which way around the wires are. Did you did you switch channel A and B or did you switch no, I just? Switched, I switched the voltage. Yeah, of course. Oh, I was dumb. Yeah, I should have switched channel A and B, not switched the voltage of channel A and B. All I've done is switch the direction the current's flowing through. So you know what to do now. Yeah, I'm just gonna switch the channel A awesome. and B around. Okay, while we fill it with the wires, I'll shut off the camera for a moment. We fuzz the wires around. We think they're in the right order. It should move in the right direction now. Good. It did. It moved in the right direction. Yay! Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> well, the end, did it actually hit the end spot? Or? No. Far from it. Oh, uh, what happened? I don't know. Yeah, you need to move the end switch down slightly. Because that's, that's all weights on me there. Okay, clear. <laughs> I think it did exactly what it's supposed to, minus the crash right now. Yeah. I think it crash drove up, to error. drove into the end switch and stopped moving, as it's supposed to be. Uh, Can you try the lights? Uh, you want me to try the lights. Okay. Okay, let's try the lights. Okay, I hope I got the command right. 
Hey! Awesome! Switch it off again? How it crashed. <laughs> it seems to crash after every command at the moment. To summarize, uh, the suction box can be moved by the motor. The counterweight weight works and might it might want to be to be, be shortened a tiny bit so it doesn't hit the bottom like this. Yeah. Okay. I know it has been a long time. I'm sorry for that. Uh, not much has been going on because the uh, lovely developers of the software had very little time to continue. But we are back in the C lab today and we are working on the software and the firmware. The electronics seem to be working, as you can see by the lights that are on now. And um, yeah, we'll let you uh, have a look into the pains of microcontrollers, Arduinos, and getting some mechanical contraption to have some logical or at least predictable behavior. That's, uh, I think, the current challenge for this episode. We a bit unprecise, but yes. It dropped a little bit because we turned the power off, but... The dropping a little bit should be fine, right? Okay, let's just go for broke. Flip page. Did a page flip? I didn't hear anything. You would have seen the box move. Um, well, the controller says it flipped a page. Aha. Uh -huh. I think it's because I turned the drivers off. It's not expecting the drivers to be off, so nothing actually happened, right? So, uh, change the flip command so it turns the drivers on. Let's have a look see here. Like, and then off after it's done. Like... Oh wait, ah, in that command... Uh, since you wrote it... Uh, uh, we lost gravity. So we need to go down, but we don't know how much we need to go down by. So how do we do it without gravity? Uh, how do we do it without gravity? Yeah, um... Do you have a sensor so that, like, if when you start it, you can, like, just detect the range and then use that to... Oh, no. no could totally put a range sensor, like, no. that'd be the top, but mm. I've got one. Not on me, but I've got one in for Range sen sensor? Like, yeah, like, ultrasonic range finder. It's officially a gun. <laughs> Book nah. gun. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, now that we can turn the drivers off, mm. just, just give it some momentum and then turn the drivers off. So the drivers are off right now, give it a push. Like, there's quite a bit of resistance. Like, I don't know. There's, there's quite a bit of resistance out there, right? You can't shove it. I can't shove it, look. Yeah, but thought. you're not shoving it. It's, One, two it's, not, it's not hitting the book, right? Yeah, because I don't want, intend to hit the book right now for the demonstration. How far down does it have to go? I don't want to give it a shove and turn the drivers off. That seems bad. <laughs> no, is it how far down does that have to go for it to turn the page? Down. Completely down, down to turn the page. It like, to it's the flat. The problem is we don't know where the bottom is. Like, realistically, we need an end stop. I know what you'll do now. What? Yes. Um, okay, so Lawrence we, we start at a calibrated zero up here, yes? Okay, so we, cali we, we calibrate that to zero. Okay. That is a zero, yes. Okay, right. <laughs> then, then we go down. Uh, and uh, and we have calibrated the amount of steps, like manually, manual value, it takes from zero to crashing the glass into that thing, that the wooden is piece we can't here. Detect when we crash into the glass. No, we can't, but we don't need to. Okay. We also don't know when we skip steps. We just don't know. I know. But uh, 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 so, so, so we calibrate the, the, the number of steps it'll, it will take us from zero to crash the glass into that wood. Yeah. Uh, and we take a little bit off, like whatever, two, three, four, or five millimeters. And that's a, and that's the point we, we go to initially when we go down for the calibration move in the book. Yeah. Yes. Then we uh, like reset the step counter because now it'll be off because we, stay, because we skipped steps as intended. Mm. Uh, and then we go back up to the switch and count the steps. And that's the distance that we use for all the page turning. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. What what's the issue, Zekfold? All right, so there's two things that are going wrong here. The box is the box thinks that the drivers are turned off and it's down here. But when we start the motion, because we have no gravity, it's actually here. 
and it will stay there because we've added the counterweight. Okay, when Sackford says we have no gravity, we mean that we now have a counterweight going there that compensates for the gravity. So the previous algorithm of just, just letting the box drop is not relevant anymore because we have a counterweight now. The second issue is that I set the height of the book to zero. So what it should do is move up and then down a bit and then back up. But because the height of the book is zero millimeters, when it tries it to move to half the height of the book, it moves half times zero, which is uh, there. So it didn't actually move. So yeah, let's, let's make a, a new set of algorithm for the Arduino and then this should be maybe even turning a page. Nah, I don't know, but it'll, it'll pretend to turn a page at least. I think, hopefully tonight. So right now we are trying to calibrate or find out what the number of steps per millimeter is with this setup and configuration and just checking that before we continue with the other steps. So 0 0.8. I'll do 500 or something. That might be a bit much, but yeah, could. Yeah, 15 centimeters could work. Yeah, 15, yeah, go 500. Alright. Okay. Stop! <laughs> it stopped. It did stop. <laughs> Quickly, so I can turn it off before it completely catches fire. 15.7, done. Cool tap. Pretty good, like, uh, now I come at 2.98 millimeter, uh, uh, centimeters for each hundred steps. Divided by hundred, so a single step is 0 0.0298 millimeters. If I just take the inverse of that? Math! I'm too dumb, dumb right now. 0 0.0298, take that down. That's the amount of millimeters zero one step zero moves it. 0.0298. So that's 33.5. So what steps a millimeter? Yeah, so 34. So how do we get the box from the top to the bottom now anyway? Um, that's a terrible idea. So if when the person putting in the book uh, places the like scanning head to the bottom, then when we calculate to the top, we can calculate like the height space of the motor. So, so we're counting just, the steps. Yeah. So we keep the same geometry system we've got now and we just push it to the bottom and then we know where it is. Yeah. Okay, so I just keep my hack in where it says that it's at position zero and we'll work out and running that feature later after we've got the page done. Yeah. Okay. We've been having trouble with the stepper driver. Apparently it is just too weak for the stepper that we are using. A sec fault attached a rather big heatsink on it and that is rather warm by now so uh, i don't know what to do about the stepper driver right now but let's see if the concept at least works let's try again <laughs> no pickup yet so i wondered why this thing doesn't suck properly and then i looked around and i found these gaping, what is it, four or five millimeters yeah, yeah. of space here, where air is freely entering the box, so I can't suck at all like this. Damn it, uh, let's fix this. Let's give this a bit more uh, ugly tape to make it more airproof. Air tape, Pull it air tape. Air tight. Air tape. Air tape, oh yeah, special air tape. Okay, so now I applied some tape here and on the other side here. So with this ugly tape here and there, there might be an honest chance at having enough suction to turn a page. Let's see. No pickup yet. Okay, um, this is, I don't know the, how many attempt at trying to turn a page. Uh, we think it might actually work now. We have been tinkering with the parameters a lot and this is not the final installation. This is actually putting in commands from the side with the notebook. Uh, this is not the real deal, but to test the mechanics and the electronics 
this is uh, suitable enough for now. So um, let's test page turning. <laughs> How long are we keeping on the blower pump? Um. So with the last attempts, uh, the blower actually was switched on on the relay board, but um, its own switch was switched off. So now the blower is switched on and it blows rather strongly. And I believe we'll try to turn the page now again. So my second camera is rolling. <laughs> That's so it looked like so we got a smile pickup. And we're rolling. Pick up. Yeah. yeah. Pick up. Yes. Yeah. That was a full page turn. The very first full page turn of this machine. This is amazing. Obviously there are lots of things to work out and this isn't anywhere close to final. But I can confirm the principle works. So this is pretty amazing I think. Two and, two and a half, three years with the cat drawings and everything. And uh, yeah, the, this machine has, still has hope. <laughs> I still have some hope now. That is a pretty good moment and I think a good moment to end this episode. Um, Thanks for watching, and if you've just made your way into the series, this is just one part of a longer series where I show all the steps how to build this page turning book scanner yourself, at least I show how I make it, and I'll provide some documentations for you to follow along in the future. How are there so many episodes of building this damn thing?